ahead and get this thing started. I know um, I don't want to hold up too much of your time. I know the storm is coming. Uh, for everybody watching this on YouTube, thank you guys so much for joining into the recess. The recess podcast is dedicated to shining light on urban youth baseball and softball and one wonderful things that's going on around the country surrounding baseball and softball. Today I have Miss Ashley Cook at a Coppin State University. I'm gonna give her a moment to introduce herself. Um, but if you're watching this, make sure you click below, subscribe to the YouTube channel, make sure you like it, share it with somebody. And now that we have all the promotional things out the way, I'd like to introduce my guest, uh, Miss Ashley Cook. Like I said, she's the head softball coach at Coppin State University, which is in the MEAC conference, and she'll tell you a little bit about that. So, um, Coach Cook, can you give us a little bit about, about your athletic background and how you got started playing softball and now coaching at Coppin State University? Well, I started young. Uh, I didn't start playing travel ball until I was in eighth grade. I started with Bayside Blues, which is a big program in Southern Maryland. Um, and then I finished up my travel ball, uh, with the Vienna stars out of Virginia. Um, so for college, I went to a Juco first, I went to college Southern Maryland and played there and then went to Bowie state university, Bowie state university is a D2, um, here in Maryland. It is an HBCU as well as Coppin, um, Played there. We were three peats. Program was really good. Um, great coaches. Um, we made it to regionals every year. I was lucky enough to get ranked nationally for my hitting and slugging percentage, home runs, and RBIs. Um, then graduated, started coaching high school just in my free time because I got a job right out of school. Then coaching opened up, and now I'm here. Um, I got hired here last October and I love it. I have a great group of kids here, young ladies, not kids. <laughs> they still, they're still kids. Well, it depends on who you ask. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but I have a great group here. Um, very talented, very motivated. Um, and determined. And I'm excited to actually, hopefully, fingers crossed, get a full season coming up. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Um, can you tell us a little something about the Coppin State softball program and what um, makes you guys different than any other softball program in the country? So like I mentioned, um, very determined group. Um, our team, uh, we are doing things for a purpose we are leaving a legacy. We're not just going through the motions. And that's what I'm trying to instill in my girls and my coaching, my coaching staff is doing the same. We're all on the same page. Um, we work very hard on and off the field. So it's, it's not just about softball for us. You know, I'm very big on academics. So we push that so much because you know softball can only take you so far you know um but we got to make sure that they're on their top of their books too absolutely um i'm glad that you brought that up um about they have to be on their books and everything so um my next question with softball being a non-money generated sport what are some obstacles that you face you know when being a head coach of a softball program when you're up against you know let's say University of Maryland who has a uh, endless bucket of money to recruit and to do the things that, you know, they need to do for the softball program. What are some obstacles that you face? Well, I mean, it's about who you know and, you know, about building those relationships. Um, fundraising is a big thing that any small sport has to do. Um, even at University of Maryland, they have to fundraise. I know this, <laughs> um, but yes. Yeah, so fundraising is a thing that, it's really no option. We have to, and we do a bunch of little things. Um, and then we have a big thing. Uh, we do a bull roast. Uh, we did one last March, obviously right now because of COVID I'm hoping that we can do it and make it an annual thing in, um, October. So that will be our main source of fundraising and helping us, you know, generate funds so we can do 
more things, you know, make trips, do preseason trips to go to Arizona or go to California or go to Florida or Texas, somewhere warm <laughs> and get games in early, you know, like the rest of D1 world does. Absolutely. Um, so when you're, you know, your D1 program and everything like that. Um, so when you're recruiting, right, what are some of the essential kind of qualities or softball tools that you're that you're looking for in young ladies so when i'm out recruiting um one obviously we're looking at skill right so i i would be lying if i wasn't looking at that so that's that's obvious thing we're looking at but another thing that i really personally look at is what they are how they're treating their teammates how they're treating their coach how they're treating their parents. Are they making their parents carry their bags? Are they being disrespectful? You know, how they're communicating and just interacting. And then also, you know, their knowledge of the game. Do they have to be told every little thing or do they understand what they're doing instead of just going through the motions? Nice. Thank you. Thank you. That's going to kind of lead me into my next question, right? Um, so when you go out, you know, you're recruiting and, you know, you see hundreds and hundreds of young ladies all the time. What are some of your, um, for lack of better terms, some of your turnoffs when you go recruit a young lady for softball? Attitude is a big thing. So it's like I said, I look and see how you're interacting with your parents and how you're interacting with your teammates and your coaches. So I, I watch all of that, you know, I watch your body language. Are you able to pick back up? If you're moping and not able to bounce back, then, you know, it take, I mean, it depends on how long it takes, you know, it just takes some longer than others. But like, if you're disrespectful, that's a huge, huge turnoff. It's not only that you have to play for me for four years, but I also have to coach you and I'm building a program and building a family and an environment and a sisterhood. And if you're negative, we don't want that. Absolutely. So um, I know I saw your roster and everything. Primarily are you are most of your players from the East coast. I know I saw a couple from all over. How do you go about like, you know, finding these diamonds in the rough? Cause you, you know, I looked up some of your players, they, they, they're getting down. So how do you, go about finding the diamonds in the rough? Well, I, um, when I came in, my team was primarily West Coast. Okay. So I have a lot of California girls on my team. Um, but, you know, we actually do have all over. Um, we have Wisconsin. We have North Carolina, New York. We've had New Jersey, like Pennsylvania. We've had all over. Um but it's, I, I go to different tournaments and watch. It just depends. Here at Coppin, I have not actually got to go out and recruit because of COVID. Um, but I look forward to going out and, you know, I wear this across my chest proudly and so do my girls. So we represent and hope well, to bring anybody from anywhere. I don't care where you're from. Let's play ball. Absolutely. So with that being said, I'm going to kind of put a target on your back right now. Who is the team to beat in the MEAC for the 2021 season? Well, see, that's like a – I know what the numbers look like, but I personally have not coached against any of the MEAC teams because we didn't get to any conference games last year. So I'm just going to say I look forward to playing everybody – and we'll see who comes out on top. Absolutely. I love it, coach. I love it, coach. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the things I um, you kind of set me up there. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, uh, I, I was picking on Nakia. She's the uh, head coach at Grandma State. I said the same thing. She had, almost had the same response. Um, major shout out to Nakia Hall for Grandma State, also swacking me act love. Um, so I know you guys, you know, I know the softball and baseball rivalry between the girls and the boys, you know, it's always been this, um, let's say behind the scenes conversation of what's more difficult to hit a baseball or softball in your opinion, coach, 
what's more difficult to hit, a softball, fast pitch, or baseball? But who's hitting it? There's oh. a difference. There's a difference because if um, – so you're, you play baseball, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're hitting softball, it's coming from a different angle, right? So you're not used to it coming from a hip. I think that it's easier for softball players to – make that adjustment and hit from overhand, you know, um, than it is for baseball players to see it underneath. It's going to take them a minute. I'm not saying they can't do it, but I have seen multiple baseball players swing and miss multiple times. I, I know a lot of pitchers. So I, I, I think that, you know, we have the upper hand on that one. Oh, so, you know, I'm gonna have to chat. We're gonna. I'm gonna have to put together a, a internet. I know it's COVID, right? Everything is on the computer, but I'm gonna have to put it together some type of virtual fast pitch versus baseball challenge. Um, I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to put it together, but that's that's down the road. I'm gonna have to shout out to uh, Monica Abbott and get her to throw against someone. Okay, uh, Monica Abbott, if you're hearing this on Instagram or YouTube when I when it's released right now. Hey, you on you you're first up for the uh coach E softball fast pitch versus uh baseball swing. So I know I'm gonna get this, you know, after you know it goes on YouTube and after everyone sees it and hear hear about it. Um what are some things that high school softball players can do to enhance their skill level to appeal to a division one coach like yourself? Master the small things. Be knowledgeable of the game. You know, I'm a big fan of doing T work. Like you don't need anybody else to master the little things. When you graduate them and go up and, you know, get your footwork right, understand the throwing slots and all of that stuff for infield, getting your crow hop and strengthening everything. Like once you get the little things um, figured out, everything else will fall in place. So stop worrying about the bigger picture so far out in advance and worry about the, what, the small things. Okay. Now, what type of, what style, I'm sorry, of softball does Coppin State play? Are you guys a shot the ball around the um, field type of team? Are you guys gap to gap? Are you guys primarily defensively heavy? So I am very, I'm, I'm going to shout out my staff real quick. Um, I'm very lucky with my staff. Um, we're all, pretty good hitters. Um, actually, uh, Narisa Myers, I don't know if you know who that is. She is on the National Great Britain team. She played on the Athletes Unlimited. She was up in Chicago playing there. Um, great hitter. She actually just hung up her cleats at the end of the Athletes Unlimited. She was re officially retired. Um, but she is one of the best hitters in the world. And I'm very lucky to have her on my staff. Um, and just her knowledge of the game. But, you know, we like to hit. We like to, we're, you know, we're, we're getting the girls out of their shells. Like I said, I've only been here since last October. So, you know, we're pulling some things out of them and showing them things that they didn't think they could do. That's wonderful. That's wonderful, man. Um, one of the great things that you mentioned early, well, just recently, I know you mentioned earlier, when you're talking about your program, that you're bringing them out of this shell, right? You're getting them being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, when you coach, what is somewhat of the hardest thing for you to translate to your girls, right? So I'll give you an example. When I coach, the hardest thing for me to preach to my guys is base running, run with reckless abandonment. If you get thrown out, it's my fault anyway. You know, that was kind of a thing that I, you know, getting through to my guys, you know, I was very, we're very aggressive on the base path. And, you know, a lot of kids, especially at a younger age, they don't want to get out. Right. So what are some things that are kind of difficult for you to get them out of this shell? Um, just the doubting themselves, you know, the, the self doubt. And so during this COVID time off, we've done a lot of mental build, you know, mental strength and stuff like that. And, you know, positive self-talk because everybody, you know, even you and I, there's times where we're like, you know, 
come on, Cook, like, you know, you, you can do better. But it's it's getting them to believe in themselves, you know, and get – because once they start self-doubt, then it, everything's out the window. Even if they've mastered it, as soon as they doubt themselves, they step – if they're stepping on that field scared or doubting themselves, then – they have no chance. So we've worked very, very, very hard on changing that. And, you know, I'm going to shout out to um, some of the players. We had MJ uh, Knighton and Shay Knighton talk to the girls um, about, you know, just their experiences um, playing at the level that they got to play at, you know, and we had Crystal Bustos and all, all these huge names just telling them that, you know, you're not perfect but you have to be pot like you have to have that positive self-talk that's huge in this game this game is a lot mental man thank you so much for sharing that i know um i'm looking at the clock and i'm running a little bit out of time we're definitely gonna have to do a part two hopefully uh, once covid clears up i'll be able to be in baltimore at Coppin Coppin state to, for one of your games or practices and really see the wonderful things that you're doing. Um, Coach Cook, can you, um, for everyone who's watching this on YouTube or is going to catch it on demand on Instagram or in all the great social media platforms, can you provide an email or contact information to someone if they want to ask a follow-up question and or get in contact with you? Uh, yes, my email is ASCOOK at coppin, C O P P I N dot edu. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Coach Cook, thank you so much for joining me on the recess. I wish the best of luck to you guys. We'll be um, chit-chatting. Hopefully the storm passes you guys over right now, the actual physical storm. Um, like I said, part two, we're ending number two. I got that from uh, my boy, Josh Harrison. Inning number two, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be there live, check out some of the great things that you're doing. Um, like I said, thank you so much for joining me on the recess. Make sure everybody who's watching this subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure y'all check out Coach Cook and the Coppin State Ladies Softball Program. Hopefully you all bring out a MEAC championship this year. That's a goal. Absolutely. And thank you so much for joining me. All right, this is Coach E and this was the recess. <laughs>